The sky falls dark. There is nothing for miles in all directions, and I am alone. I could not be happier. As I glide through the sands, I think back to the journey I have made, the places I've seen, and those whose lives I've touched. A thousand tiny experiences with a hundred different people. This was my gliding, my right, an adolescent dance with the cosmos, a means by which to truly understand who I am to others and who I am to myself. The desert is an ocean, a vast, impenetrable custodian whose searing gaze overwhelms all but the hardest of carapace. Horizons lost behind towering walls of dust and rock. History engulfed by time. The new is old, and the old is new. A world beyond, a world beyond a world, and I am but a single grain of sand. Sable is... it's a work of art. There's no other way to put it. Hyperbolic, sure, but it's... it's magnificent. A volume of astonishing encounters wrapped up in this beautiful world with that incredible art style. It's a wholly singular experience, a near-perfect execution of design principles that wraps every facet, down even to the way it looks, into its core motivation, to deliver a game that rewards curiosity, not obsession, and to craft a world to be explored, not an obstacle to overcome. Let's get the elephant out of the room. Sable takes some of its design cues from Breath of the Wild. It's a game of elevations, gliding, managing your stamina, and saying, holy shit, out loud every 20 to 30 minutes when you stumble upon something that punches you in the face with awe. However, in spite of these similarities, the result could not be more different. The game world excels at hiding its points of interest, represented brilliantly by how sheltered the Ewer and the Ibex camp, your starting point, your home, is. Nestled deep in a canyon, towering barriers on all sides, the scope of this land is hidden from you. It's not always interested in inviting your gaze in the traditional sense. Even scaling the dizziest of heights often grants you little more than sight unseen. A glimpse of a shadow of an outline of something that might be worth investigating, but in equal measure could just be a big rock. The true treasures of the world are buried, in need of closer scrutiny. Huge stretches of your time are spent roaming a landscape that is bereft of points of interest. But it is in these moments you get to absorb the ambient energy of the game world at its most ripe. Vibing in the desert. That's what Sable really excels at. A one-woman odyssey where so often it's just you, your glider, and a song on the sands. Good vibes is the purpose of the game in a more pointed sense. Sable has only one singular goal, from which all objectives inevitably draw back to. A point to all this that can be happily ignored at the player's discretion. Returning to Hyrule but for a moment, the Hero of Time's ultimate goal was to face off against an omnipresent threat that lay in your peripheral vision at almost all corners of the world. This towering mass of stone, ruin, and vicious purple. As such, all roads inevitably led towards this final encounter from the get-go. It was a harsh reminder of the great burden of your task, what you were building towards. In the context of that particular game, it was an extremely effective mechanism for driving player motivation, but it did result in all experiences in that world being painted by this suffocating crusade, for better or worse. Sable's journey, inversely, is one of introspection, one that always leads back to where it started, and the multitude of points of interest, side quests, and capital E experiences the game offers you function in a very different light. The ultimate goal of Sable is to know yourself, 
to spend time out in the wider world, getting a feel for the various types of person out there. The cartographers, mechanists, merchants, beetle lovers, thinking about who they are and to what ends their lives resonate with your drive and desires, to the ends of making a choice about your own future path through life. A lot about the gliding, this ephemeral rite of passage, is left unsaid. You know a decision is to be made about the path you will move down, whether that's back home or over some distant dune, but the gravity of that decision is left to interpretation. You are young, and the weight of such things always feels impossible to bear, or maybe you're older and recognize that your destiny will forever be in your own hands, that nothing is forever, nothing is truly perpetual. But there are no wrong choices, you are told. At one point, you muse how things would transpire were you to just find a spot to while away the days, what this would mean for building your character in the absence of curiosity. No value is placed on any one thing. You are the navigator of your own vessel. A single goal and an expanse to uncover, but not as points to attack, to build an arsenal or better prepare yourself for the ordeals that lie ahead. Rather, this is about building on the intrinsic value of experience itself, granting context for what's going on around you, to better understand the choices you will eventually have to make. Encountering the different factions the land draws you toward in order to build a library of knowledge about the world that will help you find your own place within it. Sable is an unusual open world game, for on paper it has comparatively very little going on within it. Gram for gram there are maybe 30 odd things you can explore across its expansive dunes. Rather than the scattershot spray and pray approach to filling a world with stuff to do, there's a very considered and delicate placement of buildings, ruins and wreckages you come across on your travels. Each location in its design, in its placement, where it nestles messily amongst the dust and bone of a planetary body not meant for any of us, they want you to remember each camber, each outcrop and gulf and peak. It wants you to soak in the history of it all to ask the pertinent questions about what any of this means, to impress upon you the idea that people existed here before you, and people will exist here long after you're gone. This is a place, not a sandbox, and some of its questions will inevitably be left unanswered. You are not the first to venture out exploring virgin territory. It would be arrogant to assume you alone will unlock the secrets of the universe. You are not the hero of time. You are a teenager trying to make sense of the scale of the world. You will have questions. You will wonder which came first, the Byzantine archaic citadels or the wretched carcasses of interstellar arcs. You will ask yourself just how old is this world? What did those who undertook the gliding before you discover? What's being kept from you? It's an incredibly effective design because it makes you feel like a font of discovery in spite of these things. It may not be news to the world, but it's new to you. There is meaning to be found in renewal. Elements of more conventional design can be found in Sable's world. Familiar decisions with mixed results. The cartographer balloons are a great version of the archetypal radio towers of other games. These genuinely challenging navigation puzzles that are needed to obtain a clearer idea of the topography of the region. They benefit greatly from being diverse, bespoke puzzles unto themselves that require a bit of out-of-the-box thinking to master. The chum eggs cute wiggly creatures dotted across the landscape that are this game's equivalent of Korok seeds, I'm not so much a fan of. As a facet of encouraging exploration, they do their part amicably, but returning these little buggers to their nest grants you upgrades to your stamina that, with the exception of one or two particular climbing puzzles, trivialize the game. So much of Sable's world is so exquisitely built around the player's native physical limitations and the mix of joy and relief that marks every moment you make it over the top of a seemingly impossible climb. It's so potent an experience that the idea of upgrades seems like such a baffling move. To stoke this particular fire, please know that I only discovered this system right at the end of my time with the game. It didn't even occur to me to seek such things out. And the impact of such an omission was arguably a better engagement with its identity. The other element of design I wasn't as keen on was the bike parts. 
The total conversion of design that came with swapping parts of your glider out felt like a bit of a ship of Theseus moment. Your relationship with your glider is a fundamental part of the Ludo narrative. You exist as one, extensions of one another as you navigate a world that isn't quite built for either of you. Choosing your glider's look does work hand in hand with this core idea, but it goes just a little bit too far for my tastes. Each design, as incredibly cool looking as they are, feels like a completely different vehicle and dampens that central relationship somewhat. I'm being nitpicky here at this point. I really can't find much fault with this game, bar some performance issues that honestly didn't bother me all that much. It's an experience that will inevitably differ from person to person. Your own stock in its aesthetics and the principles of its design will vary. To say it's the perfect game would be a misnomer, but it does show clearly that you can create a world worth exploring without the violent colonialist gaze that colours most of its ilk. No enemies, no hazards, and yet the sense of friction in this world remains. If anything, I believe it could have shook off more of the shackles of design of its forebears. No upgrades, no currencies, no collectibles, no matter how cute or wiggly they may be. Just vibing in the desert. That's all the game needs. Above all else, Sable is a game that made me realise that there is still ore to be found in digital realms, that I can crest a dune or climb a canyon and still have my breath taken away every time. It's something to be cherished. <laughs>